Okay, today we're going to go over the appraisal contingency addendum to the agreement of sale. Um, one page, but it seems to have a lot of confusion and uh, the wording seems to trick people. Um, so let's go over it real quick. And uh, if you have any questions or scenarios that you want, want to run by, um, we can certainly take a look at it and try to figure it out as a group, okay? So the appraisal contingency addendum to the agreement of sale, the ACA form, right off the bat, as you can see in the highlighted area here, it says not to be used with FHA or VA financing. And the reason for that is government backed loans have their own little clause within our contract, which basically states that uh, notwithstanding any other agreement outside of the contract of, of that addendum will clause. Um, if the house does not appraise for the sales price, the buyer is not obligated to buy the home. So even if the buyers have a appraisal gap in there or, or they said they're willing to pay $15,000 over the appraised value, um, they're not held to do that. Okay. So whatever is in that FHA VA box supersedes anything you write. So let's uh, take a look here. The next three lines, property, seller, buyer, pretty self-explanatory, right? The next box is box number one, paragraph one. They call this the appraised value paragraph, okay? The appraisal value of the property must be equal to or higher than the purchase price or blank dollars, minimum appraisal value, purchase price if not specified, whichever is less, okay? So let's say you're writing an offer on a $200,000 house, okay? The, the agreement of sale says $200,000 but you put in the blank that it only has to appraise for 175,000, okay? So whichever is less, so which is less? 175,000, right? So if the house appraises for 177, are you still obligated by the house, Jim? Yes. Yeah, it's within that range, right? That's that gap. $25,000. The contingency period is for blank days, 30 if not specified, from the execution date of the agreement. Within the contingency period, buyer must obtain an appraisal of the property from a PA certified appraiser. If buyer is obtaining financing, the appraisal shall be performed by a PA certified appraiser selected by the lender. So if you get a mortgage, it's selected by the lender, of course, to whom buyer has made application for financing. If buyer is not obtaining financing, okay, let's say it's a cash deal and the buyer wants to do an appraisal, the appraisal shall be performed by a Pennsylvania certified appraiser selected by buyer. Okay. So if it's cash deal and the buyer insists on doing a uh, appraisal just to make sure that they're getting their money's worth, um, then they get to select the appraiser. Okay. So whenever you're meeting with a, a seller and they're saying, well, who gets to pick this appraiser and this cash deal? It's right there in writing. Okay. So the guideline, and I'm going to turn it over to it on page two, it gives two examples okay, to this first paragraph. The first example 
Buyer A is purchasing a home for cash. The list price is $200,000 and buyer A makes a full price offer. So they're giving them the $200,000, which is accepted. To ensure that they are purchasing the property for a fair value, buyer A requires that the property be appraised for at least $200,000, okay? Another example they give here, buyer C, and this is actually a very good scenario, uh, one that I haven't seen, but it could come up, okay? Especially if you work with investors. <clears throat> Buyer C is purchasing from sellers who are liquidating an estate. Sellers claim to be selling the property at below market value in an effort to quickly resolve the administration of the estate, and the agreed upon purchase price is $200,000. Buyer C has plans to flip the property after making minimal improvements and wants to be sure that the market value of the property truly is greater than the purchase price, okay? Remember the buyer, the seller is saying, hey, you're getting a great value on this. This house is worth 225, we're selling to you for 200. So they make the purchase contingent upon the property appraising for at least 225. So the next line, talks about the note here. The language of the form states that the minimum appraisal value is either the purchase price or a specific dollar amount, okay? Usually that dollar amount is less than the purchase price because it says whichever is less, right? In the, in the contract, in the uh, addendum. If the parties want to set a minimum appraisal value that is higher than the purchase price, the words, whichever is less on line five should be crossed out with the deletion initial and dated by the parties. So let's go over to zip forms real quick. And hopefully you can see it here. This is the appraisal contingency, right? So how do you do that? Strike it out. You highlight that, hit the strike out button up here and it strikes it out. And you can actually probably even strike this out. So that just says the appraisal value of the property must be equal to or higher than blank dollars. Okay, see how that's done? And then you just have everybody initial it and you're good to go. Okay. So I never even thought about that scenario about making it appraise higher, but there are certain situations that you may want to do that. Um, I've yet to deal with 203K, but that might be a situation there too, right? Any questions on paragraph one, the value? The other thing that you should probably make sure is, is 30 days enough, because remember, it's not just the appraisal has to be done during that time, but your response has to be in before that, okay? We move down to paragraph two, and they call this the electing or waiving of the contingency, okay? So option one, there's a buyer's initials right there if you opt to have your buyer elect that uh, option. But option one states, if the minimum appraisal value is met or if the appraisal is not completed within the contingency period, buyer accepts the property and agrees to the terms of the release paragraph of the agreement of sale. So, If we have a $200,000 purchase price, and that's the minimum that it has to appraise for, and it appraises for 201, or if it's day 31 and the appraisal is still not in, 
um, then the buyer is accepting the property. Okay. Number two, if the minimum appraisal value is not met, buyer will deliver a copy of the appraisal report to seller and buyer, and buyer will, within the contingency period, do one of two things, okay? But going back to that line number, number two here, so if we have a shortage in an appraisal, okay, it's $200,000 purchase price, we said it had to appraise for two hundred thousand. Now it only appraises for one ninety five, right? The buyer then will deliver a copy of the appraisal report. So there you have it. We can't start negotiating <laughs> an appraisal shortage without proof of it. So in writing there, it says that the buyer will deliver an appraisal report to the seller. Okay, and then the buyer will do one of two things. A, terminate. Terminate and get their deposit money back. Pretty simple, right? I think that's probably why most people or, or buyer agents want to use this form for a way for their buyer to terminate. So if that's what they're seeking, a way to terminate without any questions on an appraisal shortage, then option one is what they need to use, okay? Uh, B, enter into a mutually acceptable written agreement with seller. So that just means they'll negotiate it out and figure out a price that they both parties can live with. Three, buyer does not terminate, if the buyer does not terminate the agreement of sale or enter into a mutually acceptable written agreement with seller within the contingency period, the 30 days, buyer waives this contingency, okay? So your buyer does not respond within the time frame they're buying this house. So notice nowhere in this option, it says that there's an extension, okay? Again, that's why it's so important to have, make sure the 30 days is enough for the lender to complete this and give you ample time to respond. Okay, any questions on option number one so far? Uh, one thing to note too, let's go over the guideline real quick. On page four. right in the center there. While the option to renegotiate is available, nothing in the language of this addendum requires seller to reduce the purchase price to the appraised value. Hey, Kong. Yeah. I know if it appraises at value, a lot of times the buyer's agent doesn't provide a copy of the appraisal. And in that case, they don't need to, correct? Can you say that uh, again, Jim? I'm sorry. Well, it say everything's fine and appraises at value, then there's no need for them to provide it. Right, okay. Correct. Actually, we've had a lot of sellers ask to see the appraisal and uh, it is in the contract. Um, I don't know exactly where it's at, but uh, they don't have to provide one. But if you get into negotiations and there's a difference and you're allowed to ask for one and it should be provided. Yes. Okay. If it doesn't appraise. Okay. If it doesn't appraise. Okay. Yeah, yeah. That, that makes sense. Right. Because you can't negotiate something unless you see it for yourself, um, what the shortage is. Okay. All right, let's go to option number two. They call option number two in the guideline, the waiver, okay? If the minimum appraisal value is met, or if the appraisal is not completed within the 
contingency period, buyer accepts the property and agrees to the terms of the release paragraph of the agreement of sale. Buyer further agrees to complete settlement at the purchase price by any of the following or combination thereof at seller's sole discretion, at buyer's sole discretion. A, provide additional funds at settlement. B, adjust the loan amount stated in the mortgage or financing contingency paragraph of the agreement of sale, or C, adjust the loan to value ratio in the agreement of sale. Number two, buyer's election of any option above shall prevail over like terms of the mortgage or financing contingency paragraph of the agreement of sale. All other terms remain unchanged. Any fees that result from a change in loan, in loan terms will be the sole responsibility of the buyer. And three, if the minimum appraisal value is not met, so we had $200,000, now we're at 195 and option two is elected. All terms of, if the minimum appraisal value is not met, this addendum is null and void. All terms of the mortgage or financing contingency paragraph of the agreement of sale remain unchanged and in full force and effect. So basically it just goes back to the contract, whatever you have in the contract. And this, Addendum is null and void if you picked option two. Okay. So they call option two the waiver. If your intention is to have your buyer be able to back out, option two is probably not what you want to select, have them select. Okay. Option one would be. Didn't you say you recently ran into a scenario where there was a problem with that call? Um, yeah, I mean, we always see it. It's just a matter of what do you, what is the buyer's intention? What do they want to do? What do they feel comfortable with? Right. If you find this house no matter what, and they just want to see the appraisal, then it's option two. Okay. But uh you know, one of the problems we've had recently is the, the whole appraisal gap thing. Everybody wants to write their own appraisal gap, which is um, probably not a good idea to do. Um, a recent one I saw was uh, buyer and seller agree that buyer will purchase the house $15,000 over appraisal value. Okay, on a $400,000 house. Well, what if the house only appraised for 300 grand? 100 grand less. And it says in the back of the contract that buyer and seller agree. They already agreed that they'll pay $15,000 higher than the appraisal value. You know, don't put your seller in that situation. Yeah. Um, now, one thing that Brooks had mentioned back in the past, whenever we go over the agreement of sale, is that soft appraisal contingency built into the mortgage contingency of the uh, agreement of sale. And the guideline actually talks about it. Just try to find it here real quick. See where it says background information? In transactions that are contingent upon mortgage financing, the mortgage financing contingency in the PAR agreement of sale provides a type of backdoor appraisal contingency. As written, it states that if a buyer is unable to obtain mortgage financing after meeting all other criteria, that the buyer will not be required to purchase the property and we'll get back all deposit monies. Where a property appraises for less than the amount required by the lender, causing the lender to refuse financing, the buyer would be able to be released from the transaction. Okay. 
notice that last line, the buyer would be able to be released from the transaction. It doesn't say the buyer can terminate the transaction. It says the buyer can be released from the transaction. So that's where it, we call it a soft appraisal contingency because yes, the buyer can, can get their deposit money back after being released from the transaction from the seller. The seller can terminate it and release the deposit money to the buyer. But the buyer can't just say, well, I can't buy this house. I'm going to terminate because that does not show a good faith effort of them trying to obtain mortgage financing. Okay. Tom, any questions so far, sir? Nope, we're good. Okay. All other terms and conditions of the agreement of sale remain unchanged and in full force and effect. Okay. So let's just keep it very simple. Just try to remember option one allows the buyer to back out. Option two is the waiver. It means they're gonna get an appraisal done and no matter what it comes in at, they're buying this house. They're gonna make every effort to buy that house. Tim? You know, my biggest concern is when they make the gap, let's just say 25,000 less than the asking price. And then we don't know whether or not they really have the money or not have the money in savings to put up. Let's say that they chose option two and the property appraised for 150, right? And they were getting a 95% loan. They would have to come up with the difference between the 150 and whatever 95% of 200,000 is. Right. You know, 190, whatever it is. When, well, no, they, they, if, you, if, it, if you bought it for 200 and it only appraised for 50, let's say, you would need to come up with 5% with of 150 plus the 50K shortage. Yeah. Right. Yeah, that's uh, 57500 So it's just making sure that people have enough money right? if they're choosing option two. Yeah, I mean, that's pretty huge. From Tim, your scenario, they if it appraised, they would only need ten grand. Let's, let's just use round numbers. Let's say it was $200,000 and they were putting 10% down. That's twenty grand down, right? So yeah. they'd be getting a mortgage of one eighty, But the property appraises for 150 right okay. so now they not only have to put the twenty thousand dollars down they have to put the thirty thousand dollars so they need fifty thousand dollars right down payment so i'm just saying when somebody chooses option two right we need to make sure they have proof of funds that they can come up with it that's why on the list side when you see that you you probably should ask for some type of proof of funds too so what happens in that scenario, my question, I guess, would be, what happens in that scenario that they chose option two and they don't have, and it appraises for the 150, not the, not the 200, and they don't have the extra $30,000? What happens? Um, according to this. I mean, the lender's going to deny them the loan because they're not going to not have sufficient funds. Right. So in this scenario, if you picked option two and they didn't have the money to do it, well, first off, this addendum is null and void if the if the appraisal's short, right? So if the minimum appraisal value is not met, this addendum is null and void. All terms of the mortgage or financing contingency paragraph of the agreement of sale remain unchanged and in full force. So now we revert back to what we wrote in the contract, the agreement of sale. So if they were getting a 90% loan to value and it only appraises for 150, you're right. saying the buyer, the lender could terminate the deal. And that's your way to get back out, out of it. You know, going through the agreement of sale. I had something similar like to that scenario happen where we put a hundred is 
$285,000 was the sell price. We escalated up to 300, got it at 300. We said that must appraise at or above the sell price. We did option two, so 285. And they were willing to cover a $15,000 appraisal gap. Just to say, you know, if it didn't appraise at the 300, they were willing to say it only appraises 285, they were willing to put $15,000 appraisal gap to cover it. Well, the damn house appraised at 270. $15,000 less than what the sell price was. Yeah. And it just, I still don't. Wasn't the sale price 300, Tom? So it would have been 30. Well, the sale price, well, yeah, sorry. The sale price was 300. Right. We said it must appraise it 285. 285. And so it was another 15 on top of the 15. Yeah. So. Yeah. You know, I, I could have really screwed up my buyers there because, um, what the you know, I, I admit I when I wrote that I thought well if it didn't appraise at two eighty five, then you know it appraised at two seventy five. Okay, we'll do fifteen thousand. Now the purchase price seven three hundred could be two eighty five. You following me? Yeah. Yeah. And um. And I talked to Kong about that. And I was wrong on that. And the, the other agent was totally clueless on it. She, she thought, okay, 285 would be the sell price. That's the thing is a lot of these people don't know it, you know, what's going on. And I said, well, the appraise 275, 270, we'll, we'll cover the appraisal gap. We'll do 15, still pay our $15,000. So now it puts the sell price to the 285, not 300. Because now they'd have to, if it's 300, they'd have to come up with another 15,000 to make that difference. And going back to Tim's scenario earlier, see, if you would have picked option one, the buyer can send the termination. Right. With option, option two, option now one. you're at the mercy of the seller releasing you from the transaction, or you can get the deposit money back if you can't get mortgage financing at the settlement date. Yeah, I, I'll, I'll never do option two again. Just there's so many... It's dangerous. It just seems very difficult. You know, just more cut and dry option one and right. they go in that route. Option two is just the waiver. And then you're at the mercy of the seller. Well, option two, then you got to ride this contract out to the end and continue to make every effort possible. Yeah. But but if the lender is not going to give you the money because you don't have the funds to account for it, then, you know, they're going to terminate, the, they're not going to approve the loan. Yeah. 